The title of the talk is um, What Inspires What is Personal. So each we're going to ask each artist to talk for up to about three minutes about their personal journey and how they reached, how they choose their subject for their portrait. And this is not traditional portraiture by any means, but we still consider it about a person's persona, which is another way of interpreting what portraiture is. And then we're going to also ask them how they translate that journey into A, what I said, how they choose their subject, and B, into how they each translate that into their personal style of painting. So Robin Gaines Bachman, you're first. I choose subjects that I love um, and that there's a deep emotional connection with. And in doing this, um, then I could forget about the subject. If I use a subject that I love, whether it's love or a complex emotional um, relationship, then I have uh, an encyclopedia uh, reservoir to work from, and then I can just forget about it and do the painting, whatever it may be. So um, that's really the basis of my subjects, um, love, <laughs> and, you know, and, and a depth of a relationship. And um, at that point, I used the image just as an armature on which to do the painting. When I was a less mature artist, I would be painting and I would do something that really flipped me out, that was really scary or horrific, and I would immediately, I would change it. I, I could not let it be. I mean, not all the time, but, you know, oftentimes. And now, I leave it because my personal journey is really about trust and surrender, and that's what I'm working on on, on every level, to really trusting that the process is perfect and surrendering to the perfection of this process. So now, when I'm painting, no matter what happens, I leave it and trust that somewhere down the line, this event that will have a chance to balance out and will harmonize. Um, I also think of this journey as a journey of transformation. And I do, I, I do work other than in vinyl. I, I work in oils also, and with the oils, I, I'm focused on transforming the material. I use a biology probe and I sort of sculpt the paint and transform them into sort of tapestries. And with the vinyls, what I'm interested in, these are um, my paintings, uh, is transforming like ordinary materials into, into art materials. And I'm also interested in transforming concepts. Like once I remember going to my studio with somebody and the whole way walking to my studio, this, this person was telling me how they hated vinyl, just hated vinyl. That's fine, we went to my studio, they were looking at the work, they said, oh, I love this, I love this. I didn't say word, at the end I said, it's all vinyl. And I love tricking somebody into love, you know? <laughs> tricking somebody into like letting go of a concept because I realized for myself, that's what I wanna do is let go of concepts that I hold. And um, in that process, it's really also transforming myself because I think of the, the concept as something that gets me to start the painting. And then as I'm working, I find myself able to let go more and more and just let the creative energy um, take over. And um, to conclude with what what inspires what is personal? Because everybody loves different things. Um, what I love, I mean, as I'm painting, I hear myself say, oh, I love that, oh, I love that. And I'm re I realize everybody loves different things. So to stay close to my love, it will produce something that will be di very different from what anybody else does because we all um, love different things. So I think that's how the personal happens. Um, with my work. Thank you. Um, I found my subject um, through people I know or people I love. Like this one, Sonia, is made from a real person. Her name is Sonia. And she was my model for a long time. I loved her. And she wanted to be a, a witch. In, and a um, few years ago, two, three years ago, she sent me an email. And she's a witch. She lives in Salem. 
and, <laughs> and she's very happy witching uh, whatever she does. And, and she does have this power, you know, she was a very, very powerful uh, woman. She's a white witch. She looked down, but she's a white witch. Um, and so all the paintings were um, work of mine are people I know more or less. Uh, and they are story of people I know. And um, so I try to grab not only their spirit and, and who they are, but what they, what they are and what's around them, what they carry with them. Um, I used to do drawing of my client. I'm doing Reiki, and I used to do in the old time do drawing of all of my client when I come back home with all the spirit who are around them and what's uh, going on with them. <laughs> uh, my background in painting, um, I did the Beaux Arts in France. Uh, it's a hard school, you know. I mean, you used to take eight hours doing a drawing, and the teacher will come and rip off your drawing and say you better find a job. <laughs> that doesn't exist here, or he will get sued, I guess, <laughs> for ripping your drawing, you know. So it gave me the challenge to um, never look for something I like, you know, but to go through and find really um, what's there and what's supposed to be there. Um, what was your question? Other question? About the technique. Uh, the technique. Technique. Um, if you look at my work, the technique is mostly European. Um, uh, it came from a lot of different painters I love, you know. There is a copy of uh, uh, Jacob Jacobson with uh, uh, Le Repas, which is a painting of a king who is at a table and he eats with all his friends, you know. So um, I thought it was a nice painting. I like a group of family or group of people who eat together. I think it have an impact on the soul, which is good. So I try to represent that there. Um, other painting, um, the one with the rhinoceros, everybody asked me, you know. Uh, it comes from Courbet. One painting of Courbet. If you see, there are two women laying on the on the ground there, and uh, they are drifting and dreaming, and they're dreaming of rhinoceros. I just put one of the women because um, she's dreaming of rhinoceros. I used to paint a lot of rhinoceros, and <laughs> I have a lot of them at home because people think it's a good present for me, you know. Now, <laughs> uh, so I try to get rid of them. <laughs> You know, and um, yeah, um, I love to paint. That that's it. You know, if if I have free time, that's what I'm dreaming to do. You know, and anything is painting for me. Even when I work, I I can paint in my mind. Things. I mean, I guess when you walk on the street, things coming. You know, and and you see them as painting and the light and the stuff, and and it's fun. It's fun. What's personal in my journey as an artist uh, is expression. And I feel, uh, I always seek the particular and the universal in balance. And I feel like the art that is, uh, captures us throughout time speaks to something uh, common in our, in our psychological makeup to certain commonalities, certain universals uh, that we as humans experience uh, in, in life and growing. And uh, I also like being of my time, uh, trying to make something contemporary. So um, that's, that's at the bottom or always present to a certain extent in whatever I paint. My favorite thing to paint is people. I love painting figures and I love painting faces. Um, it's not always the most practical thing because it's so particular, but when you have a love in art, you just have to follow it. Um, these are my paintings over here. Um, the this, this subjects in all of them are people that I knew in passing or you know, just came connected to at some point in life. And um, only one of the people in this, in this group was somebody that had started out as a hired model. Um, and uh, we developed a relationship, became friends over time. 
Um, when I work from models, I like to work from models who are also performers, maybe dancers who do some modeling. Um, 